The D by Eastern Illinois. Far side, Sharif Smith. Looking inside, Skipper Brown turns, climbs up over the rim. They were doing such a good job preventing any inside buckets early in this half, and now all of a sudden, seems as though the Panthers have been able to find the soft underbelly that Lopes defense. Good pass. All this kid does is make buckets tonight. Lorenzo Jenkins once again going inside, getting a hoop and a harm. He's 4-4 from the field. 3.32 to go, opening half. Lopes up 40-27. to Find your purpose at GCU. Private, Christian, affordable, and nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu. Find your purpose at GCU. Private, Christian, affordable, and nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back, GCU, with the 40-27 lead over Eastern Illinois right now. The men's basketball team will have a 14-day layoff before opening WAC play in the new year. But Nicole Powell's team will be in action tomorrow against Whittier and then Sunday, December 29th at Cal at opening the new year. The basketball team for the women's side will be at Cal State Bakersfield on the 4th. And men's basketball team will resume WAC play that day as well. And I had a chance to talk with Nicole Powell during our pregame show today, and she said, the youth is just inspiring the squad, carrying them to great things. We'll see what the new year holds for them. As for what Dan Marley's team is able to accomplish, well, we'll see what happens tonight. But at halftime, I will check in with Coach to get his take on this first half. So far, the looks looking good, guys. Yeah, no doubt, Kate. Tying the most points scored in the first half this season, matching the output against Belpo on November 22nd. And we have 3.32 to go. Out in their Christmas holiday regalia. That pass by Lorenzo Jenkins was good. He'll shoot one. He didn't say a word this time. I was, I, I was purposely not no. going to open my mouth until after that made free throw. I wasn't going to get accused of jinxing the yes, There's nothing to that, that jinx. Matt Locke. Back out, Sharif Smith, far side, Ruffus over to Max Smith. You got to look out for Max Smith, the leading three-point shooter. Get in his grill. Yeah, the Lopes were doing such a good job, too. 35% shooting for the Panthers, but lost one of the best shooters behind that three-point line, and he knocked it down. Carlos Johnson, near side. Back out, Jenkins. This three, stop, gets the rebound, kicked out, Blackshear. Waits patiently, weaves his way, leaves it. Jenkins fouled. Looks like Max Smith's going to be called. Blackshear just drops a dime right down here underneath for uh, Jenkins. He knows he's got a hot guy going. He's just going to keep feeding him. Jenkins brought that ball down, and the defender was able to get a little piece of ball, a little piece of arm. Jenkins is going to have to go to the line and make him the hard way. Missed his last two. Got to get this one to go. Skipper Brown back in from Matlock. There you go. Oh, Let's fall back a little zone defense here. Point and talk in. Trying to try to extend that defense all the way out to that three-point line. Under two and a half to go, opening half. Gabe mentioned stick around. Should be chatting with Dan Marley coming off the court. Max Smith. Ooh, all the way near side. 
kick back out. Sharif Smith for three, long distance. Big rebound, Blackshear. Excellent job with the two threes defense, pointing, making sure they were finding the baseline runner, not allowing an easy shot. That was a deep three. I'm sure Coach Spoon would like to find something a little closer to the basket than that. Ball movement. This is off the mark, though. Ah, Jenkins with the push. That's unfortunate because that's going to send them back to the other line, uh, back to the free throw line where they'll be shooting two free throws. Ethan Spry is going to check in here. That ball on the ropes, number 13, Lorenzo. Yeah, Spry got some minutes up there in altitude out in New Mexico. Wasn't able to get his three point shot to go down, but this is another guy, Coach Marley, would like to try to find some minutes as the season progresses and give some of those guys pushing that heavy load a little break. Those watching the live stream, really there's a bit of a power surge, but we're back up. Flash here. Takes the shot. A little heavy. Quickly up, front court. Finds Skipper Brown. Oh, you know, Skipper Brown traveled Skipper. when he first put the ball down above the free throw line. They didn't call that one, but then he got it all the way down here to the baseline, and unfortunately, his sneakers, they slipped on a wet spot on the floor, which caused him to turn over and fix. In fact, he's hopping off yeah, the floor. He, he might have jammed his ankle into his sneaker. Jeez. That's hopefully the kid, the young man's okay. He's going all the way back to the, towards the Panther locker room. I don't like to see that. No, sir. Brown, near side, Carlos Johnson steps back. Surveys, wants three, not there. Carlos Johnson had a little bit of a move as the way the NBA guys like to shoot him. They hard on James Harden shoots with that little hop to the side to try to get that clean look from behind the arc. Marvin Johnson in the paint, kicks out Wallace for three, good. Well, Lopes were enjoying a nice double-digit lead in this first half, but it's been the Panthers that have controlled the last 10 minutes, and they have cut the lead down to single digits. Eight-point disadvantage. 19 down to eight. Johnson, that's not there. Wow. Yeah, Carlos Johnson. Now, see, we talked about those early three-point bombs that he dropped. Now they're out there playing him tighter, having him make jump to the side for shots. Coach Marley said, hey, they're going to play you that tight. Use that good, quick first step that you got and take the ball to the bucket. <laughs> I saw a lady walking through the stand with a t-shirt on said, dear Santa, it wasn't me. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was a, you know, it, it, these um, holiday sweaters and t-shirts yeah. have gotten so creative they really do crack me up who's she kidding though come on yeah yeah she knows she's naughty trying to recover here at the last possible moment <laughs> oh, who doesn't love elf i'm not a fan Ooh. Ooh, whoa, whoa. I, we're gonna have to get into that I, in the I, second I, half yeah, i'm not a fan of that movie i I know that's almost like blasphemy for some of these Elf fans, Die but it's not a Christmas movie either. Oh, I love no, no, I love Die Hard. That's oh, okay. a that's a big time Christmas movie. Oh, for sure. But Elf, that my thing. Well, all right. Wallace. Is he beyond the arm? Yeah, that's about the only thing we talked about. The, the Lopes have done wrong here is they have not played without committing fouls. Just 16 seconds to go in this half and. The Panthers been having a tough time scoring. They keep putting him on his free throw line, but they got some good rest for Labor here. He never did come back, so he's resting probably about the last four, four and a half minutes of this game. They have some good rest, and he can come back fresh to finish this game in the second half. But Coach Marley's been really good drawing up plays when the Lopes have the final shot of the half. Can he do, dial up another good one here? Mikey Dixon in for Ethan Spry. Isaiah Brown with three personal fouls, remains on the court. 
Doesn't have a point. Nine point lead by GCU. Carl's out for Eastern Illinois. Real small team on the floor right now for the Lopes. They're going to milk this game clock all the way down to make sure they get the final shot. Sharif Smith eyeing Mikey Dixon. Dixon brings it in. Step back. Seven on the shot clock. Got to move quickly. Dixon drives off the glass. Oh, they got Dixon with a charge. Defender stepped in there. Dixon tried to drive that ball some 45 feet from the basket. It was easy for the yeah, defender right? to, to see exactly where he was going to end up on the floor and step in there and took that charge. I think he started his first run too soon and then realized it, tried to bring it back out. Now, as you said, he got a hurry to try to get to the basket, and that's when he ran over the defender. Final shot, Wallace, midcourt. Ooh, that almost looked close to what I did early exactly. before the basketball came. Good half by you the Lopes. Offensively, they were fantastic. Shot a high percentage from the field, especially from behind the arc. Just got to tighten some things up on the defensive end. Set it down to Kate. All right, thank you. Well, Coach, this first half, the team came out with an urgency. It seemed like a new energy in that first half. What do you think that was attributed to? Well, I mean, we shot the ball really well from three. That was a big thing. And then we got into foul trouble. You know, we got nine guys, so we got Bunch of guys with three fouls, a couple guys with two, so we got to play better defense without fouling. You reference the three shooting, eight of 12, and three guys already in double figures. What's been the difference maker on offense before that foul trouble? Well, moving the ball and I guess just jumping up and making shots. I mean, I knew this team could shoot, so it's about time we made a few. But like I said, I'm more concerned down here. We started off pretty good, but way too many fouls are killing us at the free throw line. Thank you very much. Well, prior to the game, Coach Marley and I joked about all you want for Christmas is a W, especially when this team is closing out its 14-game non-conference schedule. When we return here on Fox 10 Extra, we'll continue our Lopes halftime show. Lots of holiday spirit coming your way. Plus, we'll recap all the action as GCU takes a 43-34 lead over Eastern Illinois into the break. The 44 Rangers now in the stalls, starting at 28-9. On in to Arizona's largest Ford dealership and head out out in a new Ford. This is Sanderson Ford Country. Ford Raptors, 35 now available. Are on in the Arizona's largest Ford dealership and head out in a new Ford. This is Sanderson Ford Country. I'm Courtney and I'm earning a master's online at GCU in Christian ministry. My husband is in the military, so we move a lot. I really wanted a school that would support me no matter where I lived, and GCU was a great fit for that because although it's a rigorous program, I really enjoy that I get to do it on my time. Sometimes that's at a coffee shop, sometimes it's in my office. Faith is a big part of my life. I play violin in my church, and I get to express my gifts and worship God. I pray continually, and I just really try to seek God. I really wanted to go to a school that could highlight that and worship God freely, and GCU definitely gave me the platform to do that. Being an online learner at GCU, I've really made a personal investment in my own life that has given me such confidence to go into my field, not only to become an expert, but be a change agent for the world. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. When I went on the Polar Express and I got to meet Santa Claus when I was maybe six, that was probably the best time I ever met Santa Claus. He gave me a little candy cane. The first time we, we moved in our first Christmas at our new house, my mom actually knocked the tree over and broke down, broke all the ornaments, and it's her favorite Christmas uh, memory because we like all went like hot deer because we were really little. Well, it was like the last Christmas that I shared with my grandpa. We put on like all pajamas, like we always put on pajamas. He was like joking the whole night, and like that's literally all I could remember from that Christmas was him like joking the whole. And I was just laughing at him the whole time. I was around nine or ten. My older brother had come and surprised us with a visit. I hadn't seen him in a really long time, and when he came into the room, I hugged him real big, and then he gave me the news that I was going to be an aunt. Every Christmas Eve, we watch It's a Wonderful Life and um, make cookies, um, ice the cookies, and then we open pajamas. Doing White Elephant every year with my family. 
even though as a kid I got the little game We Little Piggies about four years in a row. We have to stand in our hallway and our parents come out and record us walking in to see all of our presents. We go to the beach kind of as a family and surf and kind of enjoy the weather. Going outside on Christmas and going getting snow from our front yard and then making homemade ice cream. When I was three years old, my dad bought me a Little Tykes basketball hoop and me and my brother had that basketball hoop in our room probably until I was like 10. My dad got us um, like one of those toy cars that you could like drive around in, whatever, but it was a fire truck. So we like, we went outside and it was, our back, it was in our backyard and all my siblings, we got in it and there was a hose on the side of it. And so we <laughs> filled it up with water and we're driving around our street just spraying um, water out of our little fire truck. My favorite Christmas memory is when I got my chopper bike when I was like 11, 10. I didn't know how to ride it, but I always wanted one, and then my dad surprised me with one. Welcome back to the Lopes Halftime Show, coming at you live here from GCU Arena on Fox 10 Extra. As you just heard, various GCU athletes sharing their memories of Christmas past, some of their favorite gifts, and it's great to hear a guy like Isaiah Brown talking about getting a basketball hoop, and well, look how that flourished for him. Very glad I got that for my kids a little, uh, a couple years ago, right? How can that play out? Anyhow, we hope you are having a great holiday season. We thank you for checking in here with us. And as you enjoy the holiday season, perhaps watching some family movies, here's a good reminder of what you want to tune into, some favorites for the Lopes basketball team. Dan Marley checking in with It's a Wonderful Life. And meanwhile, Mikey One Dixon hoping to play the Grinch tonight. Spoilers to the Panthers of Eastern summer. Illinois. Isaiah Brown, Carlos Johnson, and Alessandro Laver. Well, they must be teammates because they all checked in with a favorite from the Home Alone trilogy. And I'm all about Ethan Spry's favorite, Elf. Scott Williams may like it, but I think it's a great, fun holiday movie. And this is a time, it is the season to have some fun. And of course, all you could want is a W. That's exactly what the Lopes are hoping for tonight when we come back. We'll check in with both Barry and Scott to get their take on what played out in the first half. And let me leave you with this. When it comes to Dan Marley's favorite holiday music, well, it's Grandma Got Ran Over by a Reindeer. Do with that what you want. We'll be right back right after this. Come be part of the fastest growing professional network at Grand Canyon University by enrolling as an evening student at our vibrant campus in the heart of Phoenix. Earn your bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree to take your career to the next level. Engage with industry expert instructors in small classroom settings one night a week and become part of the Young Professionals Network at GCU. Find your purpose. Sign up to attend our info session on November 7th at 5.30 p.m. at gcu.edu slash evening. Find your purpose at GCU. Private, Christian, affordable, and nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu. Who doesn't love carolers? Love carolers. They even got the outfits to go with know, the voices. Classic. I remember growing up, they used to come by the, the, your house. Yeah, of course, can't, nobody can't answers do that anymore. Their, can't do that anymore. <laughs> you got the ring doorbell camera. Shh, the doorbell. <laughs> Hi, right. noise. What, who is it? <laughs> How about that, though? Uh, talk about singing uh, some nice melodies in that opening half. How's that for a segue transition? The uh, Lopes are on top here by nine. 
They did a fantastic job. The two leaders finally showed up in big fashion tonight. Carlos Johnson and Alessandro Laver, both in double figures in scoring. Got the Lopes off to a great start offensively. Got a big bump off their bench, 14 points off the bench, led by Jenkins. They, they only had four for the entire game at New Mexico. I so know. that was huge to get them off to a fast start. Let's take a look at our first half highlights brought to you by SRP, delivering water and power. Speaking of Laver. Yeah, he, he revived the power underneath to start this basketball game. Shows tremendous patience and footwork down there on that low block. He was wonderful, five of seven. He also knocked down a couple long balls. He knocked down two from the outside. The concentration of finish, 13 points and two assists. He was a plus 17 when he was on the floor. Then Carlos Johnson, I mean, wow. Was that guy fantastic from the behind the arc? Four of five from the land of three. Four of eight for the game. He's got himself a three rebounds, and he was the one that really got the Lopes off and going from the outside, and then it opened it up for Laver and Jenkins to knock down a couple themselves. First half stats brought to you by Commonwealth Insurance, the way insurance should be. Look at the three-pointers, the field goals. The rebounding margin is close. You mentioned the bench points. The margin there blocks in favor of the Panthers from Eastern Illinois. Yeah, Coach Marley talked about the defense with yeah, Kate going right. to break and how well they had done shutting down that Panther attack, only 39% from the field. But too many fouls put them on that free throw line where they were able to get some easy, uh, easy points. They had, what, a 19-point lead at one point and shipped it down to nine. They've got to continue that up-tempo play that they began the game with. Yeah, that, that first half for that was really the, the tempo that the Lopes would favor. They've been really good at coming out of that locker room uh, and, and establishing their style of play. They're going to have to do that tonight because this Panthers team is really good themselves at coming out of the locker room and going on big runs. All right, Kate will be back with more of our halftime festivities from GC Arena. The Lopes on top. Curiosity fuels you. It helps you understand the world around you. It's your guide through life. So when you're ready for a fulfilling new career, let your curiosity fuel that change. Change is difficult, but Grand Canyon University's online degree programs in technology make it convenient for you to achieve your dream. While businesses are being transformed by artificial intelligence and analytics, GCU teaches you how to plan for innovation and make sense of the world. By applying that knowledge to today's most challenging problems and sharing your insights, you're helping to build a better tomorrow for you, your community, and your family. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. GCU. Private, Christian, affordable, and nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu. Well, we hope you're hungry for more Lopes basketball. Second half will be underway in just a few moments here on Fox 10 Extra. But in the meantime, in the first half, the Lopes cooking up something special here. GCU Arena as they close out their non-conference schedule. When it comes to the first half stats, we bring them to you by the streets of New York with the leading scores. And right now, leading the way for the Panthers, Smith with 13, Wallace 7 to his name. Meanwhile, Grand Canyon, 8 for 12 from beyond the arc, splitting up the scoring a bit. Strong double figures from three different players. Johnson with 14, Labor with 13, Jenkins with 12. And as I mentioned, the team trying to put a red bow here on the 2019 season. This is their 14th game of non-conference play. It will be their final, and as we showed you earlier on the BSN athletic calendar, they have an unheard of almost, unprecedented 14 days off before they begin whack play in the new year. But you don't have to wait that long for us. We'll be right back, Barry and Scott, with more second half action coming your way right after this. I'm Courtney. 
And I'm earning a master's online at GCU in Christian ministry. My husband is in the military, so we move a lot. I really wanted a school that would support me no matter where I lived, and GCU was a great fit for that because although it's a rigorous program, I really enjoy that I get to do it on my time. Sometimes that's at a coffee shop, sometimes it's in my office. Faith is a big part of my life. I play violin in my church and I get to express my gifts and worship God. I pray continually and I just really try to seek God. I really wanted to go to a school that could highlight that and worship God freely. And GCU definitely gave me the platform to do that. Being an online learner at GCU, I've really made a personal investment in my own life that has given me such confidence to go into my field, not only to become an expert, but be a change agent for the world. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Curiosity fuels you. So when you're ready for a fulfilling new career, let your curiosity fuel that change. Grand Canyon University's online degree programs in technology make it convenient for you to achieve your dream. GCU teaches you how to plan for innovation. By applying that knowledge to today's most challenging problems, you're helping to build a better tomorrow. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. One of my favorite Christmas memories is when I was three years old, my dad bought me a Little Tykes basketball hoop. And me and my brother had that basketball hoop in our room probably until I was like 10. And uh, it was all beat up, but that was like where the most crazy one-on-one -on -one games and, and happened. And I definitely attribute a lot of my early basketball skills to that, that Little Tykes basketball hoop. So it's my best Christmas memory. Welcome back. Little Tyke poop. That's a nice little gift right there. I don't remember. You and your brother could go. That could be yeah, some epic battles. That. I don't remember little tights back when I was, no? was growing up. I don't think they had the little tights yet. We had the little one that, the little Nerf poop that went above yeah. the door. Oh, yeah, yeah. With the little sponge, yeah. orange oh, basketball. Yeah. Slam that thing. That, now, we would go to work on that thing. I mean, busting out the door and yeah. <laughs> the drywall around the bucket. Oh, going hard to the hole, dunking on that thing. And a lot of elbows flew during those Nerf. <laughs> Those Nerf basketball games. We hope you're enjoying your holiday season. Tuning into GCU basketball here on Fox 10 Extra. Second half underway. Hope stands remain on their feet until they hit a bucket. Eastern Illinois, Aaron three, and here comes GCU. Well, that's the way they started, playing good defense and a rebound in that basketball. Limiting the Panthers to one shot without foul. Labor, tied by Matlock. Blackshirt comes over to help. Labor trying to muscle his way in. Fans can take a seat. I see why they tried to double team Labor down there. Look at Blackshirt causing ah. havoc in the backcourt. But Layton, Labor does such a good job with patience down there around the basket. But boy, I'll tell you, wow. slick. <laughs> Marvin Johnson. Yeah. Real quick, look at he split to the other end. Johnson just got that ball out about the U on the floor and turned and put his head down and went right to the bucket. And that was a little nifty finish after the contact with the offhand. Four on Mikey. A good head of hair. I, I, I think that's what I'll ask for for Santa for Christmas is some, a good, some hair going in 2020. Maybe I'll let my my hair grow in 2020. I don't I don't I don't think you should do that. Uh, you look, <laughs> oh man you look, you look great. You know uh, what I know I mean I you can you can work that one. Bald is beautiful but, but that's a good head of hair. I wouldn't mind trying that style. Well, maybe get a wig first and see how that looks. Oh, I'll tell you what, Alessandro Labor, it doesn't matter who's guarding him, if they got good hair or bad hair, he's going to work down there on that low block. Left shoulder turns, the right hand hook has been diddly. He's going to have to step up here in the second off of Carlos's foot. Yeah, he kicked it. He yeah. kicked, you know, anything you got to do to get a stop is what you got to do. And Carlos Johnson saw they were going to try to bounce pass by him, and he just put that right foot out like a soccer player. And, Kicked it out to the side. Spoonhauer brings out Marvin Johnson, who had that nice drive to the hoop, puts Sharif Smith in. Matlock back to Sharif. 
Back out on top. Max Smith, lethal from the arc. Dixon looking to move. Step back. Not there, but he gets the rebound or had it temporarily. Yeah, he goes to that offensive glass. You've got to put a body on him. Can't leak out. Johnson drives. That's pushed down by Matlock. Picked up by Sharif Smith. The Lopes have only allowed three offensive rebounds to this point. Wallace. Floater. Good. Ah, just nice job there by Wallace. Taking that ball right to the heart of the GCU defense. His team needed a bucket and he delivered one. How can the Lopes answer on the offensive end? Trying to put that ball down the labor's hand on that block. They find something good down there. Sharif Smith ball. First personal. First on the first hip. Follow the you mentioned Max Smith. He was doing fantastic work behind that arc. He had three threes in that first half. And we're going to have to pay attention to where he had one of the main things on that board and on the defensive end for the Lopes um, pregame huddle was no personnel. <laughs> so they want to make sure that they know where Smith is at in the second half behind the heart. Labor trying to move on Dixon. Turn around. Good. Alessandro Labor here in the second half looking sharp. Oh, big Brahma Bull down there on that low block. Labor just got a couple bangs down low. He's 8 for 10 for the field. He's got himself 19 points, and he hasn't forced a thing. Matlock takes it into the paint, kicks back out. Step back in the corner, off the rim. Labor with a rebound. Labor's doing it all. Five boards now for Labor. Blackshear, kiss. I was wondering when Blackshear was going to come to the party because he was snake bitten that first half. He and Brown were scoreless, and that yeah. time Blackster said, I'm gonna go give me a high percentage shot right at the rim. Well, when you need a couple buckets, you go to you gotta go to your strength. And look at Black uh, Labor down there just bang, bangs him twice with that shoulder towards the middle, and then turns baseline away from the pressure. And Blackshear just beep beep from going right to the bucket, hanging in the air. Couple buckets inside there for the Lopes. Got them off to a nice start here in the second half. Closing out non-conference play here, the overall whack standings. Nobody really running away with it, Scott. California Baptists, um, seven and four on top. They've a real difficult schedule for Cal Baptist, New Mexico State. They're seven and six. They've had some pretty tough games. They played New Mexico twice and lost both of those games. Uh, Seattle six and six, KC six and seven. Bakersfield, who the Lopes open up on the road, they're five and eight. Now, no, no, nobody's off to a great start, uh, but you know these games in the WAC will be highly contested. As a lot of these teams have remember what happened a year or two before, and want to get paid back or to stay on top in the Lopes uh, situation. So they're looking forward to finishing off this non-conference schedule and then attacking those Western Conference teams. Utah Valley just losing to Long Beach State by three. Well, she's not going to get any presents. She just said she's naughty. Like, yeah. At least we had she's one just woman confessed. said it wasn't her fault. Yeah, she just confessed that she, guess, she knows she's not on that nice list. Oh, she's on the nice list for sure. Beautiful baby. For every three-point shot that GCU makes, Canyon State Credit Union will make a donation to the Students Inspiring Student Scholarship. For more information, go to giving.gcu.edu. Well, that's a Santa hat right there. I was trying to find a Santa hat to wear. I had found one that was must have been one of my kids from some time back because it was kind of three sizes too small. I couldn't get it on my big bald dome. I had to leave it at home. That was that was really nice. Love to see people all dressed up for the holiday season. Yeah, you know, just people just it, more festive. Just holding doors open for you. Yeah, guys, you know? Yeah, that guy bought my Chick-fil-A sandwich, the car in front of me did today at the drive-thru. Bring it forward, huh? Yeah, I was like, you know, like that was awesome. So wouldn't it be great if it was like that? Spirit. Like I love 365, that spirit, right? Wouldn't Instead it? of two weeks in December. No, that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Come January 2nd, people cutting you off on the road again, giving telling you you're number one. Oh, there's, there's hope. Incivility. Duffus, Wallace, 
Inside, Dixon turns back to Wallace. He's hit from the arc. Trey Smith cuts in. Nowhere to go. Throws it up. Shot clock was nearing expiration with just two on. Yeah. Aaron shot. Yeah, yeah, nice job by Label. When that penetration came at him, he stayed on his feet. Didn't bite on that pump fake, and there was nowhere to go with the basketball but step back outside. Johnson for three. Well, Carlos Johnson, that last defensive possession, was kind of pawing at his foot there. Wallace was driving. Foul committed. Mila Lopes. Devon Blackshear. Yeah, shoot foul to send the Panthers back to the free throw line. That's one thing Coach Marler is not going to want to see that penetration and ends up committing fouls. It's Panthers having a tough time scoring from the field. They did all most of, a good portion of their damage from the free throw line in that first half. Don't want to get them going to the second uh, to the line here early in the second half. Eastern Illinois coming off a victory over Western Illinois, securing the old rail splitter axe. That's I right, that 164th edition. Yeah, the 164 old rail times. splitter axe. That's, that's a, lot, a lot of action on the, on the hardwood. Skipper Brown called for the foul. Spin Hauer has taken off the jacket. Time out on the floor. Time out on the floor, 15.55 to go. 11 point Lopes lead. Closing out non-conference play against Eastern Illinois. I'm Andrea and I'm earning my PhD online at GCU. Pursuing my PhD online at Grand Canyon University is a huge investment into my future. I'm also learning critical thinking and problem solving skills that I can apply to every facet of my life. When you are working, going to school, balance is key. I really try to practice what I preach to my students. As an online faculty member, I stress the importance of time management, and I demonstrate that by example. A Christian worldview is important to me in all facets of my life because it is a huge part of who I am. And I want to make sure I'm demonstrating that not only to my students, but to my children. I plant these seeds that when they're older, they're also demonstrating God's love through service. GC's community is welcoming. Whether you attend on campus, online, or in the evening, we are all one big family. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. GCU men's basketball is brought to you in part by Sanderson Ford. The best play in a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. By BSN Sports, the largest provider of team sports equipment and apparel in the country. And by SRP, delivering water and power. Eastern Illinois University alums, Joan Allen, Tony Romo, Jimmy G, Kevin Seitzer, Kansas City Royals fan. Burl Ives. Talk about the holiday season. Burl Ives. What a, what a voice, Burl Ives. There he is. Oh, man. Yeah, I remember that. I look a little bit more like him every day. <laughs> I love that car, too. Eh? He would slide around on that snow and say everything was going on during the holiday spirit. That's what my like Rudolph, the Red Nosed Reindeer, and yeah. The Yukon Jack oh, and all yeah. that, you yeah. know, the Bobble Snowman. Oh, yeah, that was scary. It was like, uh, Mr. Yeah. Freeze and was Heat Miser. Heat Miser. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was that cartoon, right? Yep. Yeah, that was good stuff. Good that was stuff one of my indeed. favorites. John Melkovic also, apparently. Eastern Illinois. Oh, um, it's, it's pretty good, you know. That's a good lineup right there. Yeah, Jimmy G, San yeah. Francisco 49ers quarterback. They're in action right now against the LA Rams. They're getting busted 21 to 10 here in the in the first half, they better pick oh, it up. They were off to a dynamite Seattle start. Win that kind, that yeah, division. they're they're trying to give it to the Seahawks. Oh, this oh back look at that! Oh, that B.O.B. Coach Marley down there on the whiteboard drew that one up to perfection. Gotta like that. Matt Smith moves it to Charles back out front. Inside Dixon, back out. Moving the ball around, step up, nice move around. Jenkins loses the handle, Lopes ball. Uh, 
I'll tell you what, Loeb's doing the job defense. Look at this baseline out of bounds play. Loeb's so good at execution on those SOB sideline out of bounds and baseline out of bounds plays. And that time they got an easy bucket inside. And I just got corrected. Rich Reed texted me up and said it was Yukon Cornelius, not Yukon Jack. So I had my name yeah. correct. It's a little scary that he knew that. <laughs> Rich doesn't miss a thing. He <laughs> loves some Lopes basketball. He's got to like what he's seeing tonight. Lopes going inside for buckets, shooting high percentage behind the arc as well. Got to stop defensively. Johnson, Laver, Jenkins, 47 points, 13 rebounds. Laver has the ball. Brown gets some points. Yeah, Isaiah Brown on the board. Wow, they're like a Ginsu knife right now. The old. Two now, I timeout. Yeah, slush slicing and dicing them right now. They, they got that defense spread open. They don't know where all that um, offense is going to come from, inside or out. 6 0 run for the Lopes to push it up to a 17 point advantage here at 14 34 to play. One more time here. Just great job. Good court vision. Nice passing. Moving without the basketball. Brown gets himself a bucket. So the two guys that didn't score in that first half. Now come in here with buckets and the Lopes are doing a great job. Seven of 10 in the second half from the field. Thunder getting a little risky. The Thunder got on one of those uh, Ovo suits there. He's in the best of spirit. This fits. Yeah, Santa Claus is. I had a chance to go with him. Mickey Mouse one that kind of lit up, had light bulbs that lit up, but oh, I, that would have been I just great. thought that might be too much, you know, with the Over cameras. The top, yeah. yeah, with the cameras, it well, might show up a little too too much. So I decided to go a little more understated here with the T-Rex. Oh, that's a strong hat there. Great effort. Johnson inside, kick back out. Sharif Smith moves to his right. Wallace, Wallace steps in. Into the corner it goes. Max Smith. His three doesn't go. Wow, that was a nice job of that zone defense. The big man had to come all the way out to guard that three-point shot. Thought they might get burned on the offensive glass, but Lopes did a good job recovering on the deep on the glass. All right, the flashman. Oh, Blackshear, 8-0 run now and counting as Blackshear goes inside for a bucket. All these points coming in and around the painted area. Now 24 to 10 advantage. Lopes in the paint. Look at that. D under the hoop. Laver and company. Johnson back out, Brown, Labor. Johnson cut in, guarded heavily. Blackshear has a bounce pass into Lorenzo. Lorenzo with a little bit of time, put it down to the floor, fouled there. Sharif Smith called. Second on him. Matlock in for Dixon for Eastern Illinois. Over the top to Jenkins. Jenkins to Brown. Brown moves around Wallace. Leaves it there for Johnson. Is there a whistle? Yeah, thank you. I'm wondering why. Fifteen foul on the Panthers. Looking a little tired of the Panthers. Blackshaw. Step back. Ooh, almost picked. Johnson ooh, gathers that loose ball up. Little floater doesn't go. Again, though, you know, good patience on offense and another high percentage shot for Johnson on that baseline. Defense is balanced. Get back and make the Panthers have to go against your set defense. Matt Lock. Back out. Johnson. Wallace looks for three. That doesn't go at the shot clock expiration. Yeah, Eastern Illinois right now just can't buy a bucket. Just ten of, two of ten shooting here in the second half as the Lopes are just having their way. Wow. Well, oh, travel this time. <laughs> yeah, let's on the labor can't believe it because he thought he was tripped, and that was the reason why he traveled. Lopes weren't buying what he was selling. Coach Marley wants to get a talking to him and get some out of the game here. Labor's going to take a seat. Bryce Hokepo steps back in. Hokepo has been on the floor for about 10 plus minutes. Looked pretty sharp in that opening half. 
Gutless. A little bit of room, bounce pass. Matlock doesn't go. Gets his own rebound, little turnaround. That one doesn't go, and the Panthers can't buy a bucket. Now the zone defense the Lopes have put on the Panthers, they just aren't able to get a bucket anywhere on the floor. Don't have the confidence to shoot it from the outside anymore. Nobody's really penetrating inside against off the dribble drive. Marley wanted a foul. Jenkins unsuccessful on the shot attempt. Driving. Johnson back out. Quickly in the corner. Wallace wide open. Three. Good. Uh, he got that one to go. And that corner three ball is a good shot to shoot when you're struggling. It's as almost as good as getting one right in front of the basket. Johnson takes it from Blackshear. Steps back. Like Johnson's been on this on this floor the whole game. He hasn't come off the floor much. Leaving. Wow. Making it happen. Time out on the floor, 11.35 to go in the second half. Lopes up 59-43. Hi, I'm Brittany, and this is <laughs> Ask GCU. Hi, I'm Brittany Holwin, and you should watch Ask GCU. Where we answer your questions every week. And the points don't matter. Wait, what? Tune in every week for answers to be questioned. Where we answer your questions in a common, prof in a, all right. Common professional Three, two, answer. <laughs> Tweet hashtag AskGCU to get your question featured. There's an exciting destination for food, fun, and golf in the heart of Phoenix. Come to the GCU Hotel and Canyon 49 Grill, where our hospitality management students gain real-world experience and deliver unmatched service. Enjoy beautiful amenities like a resort-style pool, full-service fitness center, championship golf course, and coffee shop GCBC. Canyon 49 Grill serves American fare all day and happy hour with a great vibe and Lopes pride. Room rates start at $89 per night. Visit gcuhotel.com today. Welcome back. Just under 12 minutes to go in tonight's action. Right now, the Lopes with the 59-43 lead over the Panthers. But first, we take a look at Nicole Powell's women's squad. This is Thursday against UCSD. Now, UCSD had a hand of lead over the Lopes, but they came storming back in the fourth quarter and check out this finish in the final second. They came back getting that layup. That was Deja Daniel. They pull off the play with .3 seconds on the clock for the 58-57 final. And if you could see that, it was pretty impressive, Scott. I think you would like it. Nicole Powell's kind of set up a triple screen for her squad, believing that Daniel could get it done, and she did just that for the victory. That was following a big UNLV win on Monday night. And I had a chance to talk with Nicole Powell, and she said the difference maker for this team is that they have found a way to win those close games, closing out their non-conference play. She said at the start of the season, they were kind of still finding themselves, and those close games just weren't falling in their favor, but now they have stepped up, showing some poise, confidence, and it's playing out on the court as they've gone out there, got two big wins. And while the men's basketball team will have a 14-day layover before they start WAC play to start the new season, Nicole Powell's team will be in action this week and next. Um, so you can catch their action if you're able to come out here or follow them online. Yeah, they're looking sharp. Big <laughs> win against UCSB. Yeah, that was some of the gals from the team down there we were showing there uh, coming out here and supporting Support. the guys. Yeah. Yeah, maybe some of that good luck they had in their big uh, buzzer beaters uh, rubbing off here on this Lopes team. Great to see the other student athletes coming out to support other teams. Yeah, yeah, they I, do I, re really well here. I heard Josh Braun and some of the other guys, they used to come out and support the women's teams yeah. as well. So it's kind of a give and a take. Marvin Johnson is shot short. Oak Poe comes down with it. <laughs> Oak Poe's got some live legs. He gets up off the floor in crowded spaces. <laughs> it just seems like it doesn't matter how high he's got to go. He'll just go a little higher than the guy standing next to him. Up top. Oh, it doesn't go. Carlos tried to one-hand it. Does Brown get called for foul? Yeah, oh, Brown reaching in. It kind of ball was a little bit loose, and he reached and tried to get it. Jenkins threw that one in there, and I would have thought that would have been one that Carlos would have tried to get with two hands rather than the one hand uh, hammer dunk there. Just just put two hands on it and make sure you get it in the bucket. But 
Well, another nice, well-drawn up play coming out of a timeout situation. Carlos knew he could have had it. Labor back on for uh, Jenkins. Brown's going to take a seat. Mikey Dixon steps on the floor. Both Brown and Dixon have four personal fouls. You know, Dan Marley never played much zone defense. He always played man-to-man -man defense because that's what he knew in the NBA level. But he's learning really how to teach his team how to play this zone defense. It really has shut down this Panthers here in the second half. They're getting no field goals. Labor. Dixon on him. Wall has put a hand in there. Mikey Dixon, back to labor. Step back. Good, oh man, that was a nasty looking shot. He looked like Dirk Nowitzki on that one there. He Look at him kind smiling. of act like he was going to take it to the bucket and then faded back off of one leg. <laughs> the way Dirty used to do it down in Dallas. Dixon, standing up tall, lean. Labor, 21 points, five boards and four assists underneath. Oh, it doesn't go. Put that ball in there with authority. I was just bragging about how high and how fast he got off the floor, but he lost that one and wipe off that grease. Matt Smith, his three off the rim. Hold down by Okpo. 20-point lead for the Lopes. This game has just been blown open here in the second half. All the way over Johnson. Crossover underneath. Oh, that's just a pity that didn't drop. Good old Poe down there fighting and clawing. Ooh, loose ball down low. Mikey Dixon picked off by Charles up top. Nice work. Marvin Johnson puts it home. Ah, you know, that's a tough one there because your, I mean, your man Opo's working down there hard to get that offensive board. But then he makes a pass that he generally doesn't make to a guy slicing down the lane, trying to throw the ball below someone's kneecaps. That's not his strength. Blackshear tried to take it. Loose ball picked up by the Panthers. Okpo tried to knock it out of Dixon's hands. He takes it up. Far side, near side, Charles for three. Uh, a couple this easy buckets oh. now. One from a, a turnover that leads to a dunk and then the open three in that transition. What was the 20-point largest lead of the game got shaved to 15 in a heartbeat. They can play some Dixon trying to cross up over Wallace. Step back. Good for Mikey Dixon, two-pointer. Uh, Nike Dixon, nice job that time. Carlos Johnson had one of those early in the game where he was able to put a little pressure on the defense and pull back after creating some space. And that's something Mikey Dixon is going to be real good at as well in a low shooting form. Just being able to create offense for himself. Looking for three off of the backboard. Picked up by Blackshear. 8.20 to go, second half. Lopes in control. Labor, tied by Dixon. Looking to move on him, back out, Okpo. Well, Okpo hit one from there earlier in the first half. That little free throw line, Jay, just a little strong on that attempt. And another three-pointer out of the corner. Uh, Lopes, like you say, don't get complacent. The 20-point advantage now shaved 14. Max Smith, who has been lethal from three-point land for Eastern Illinois, their leading three-point shooter for the Panthers as the Lopes have opened up a 14-point lead here with 7.59 to go. Alessandro Labor looking sharp here in the second. Well, Labor's just been very patient around the basket tonight. He's doing a nice job. He's trying to probe the defense, figure out where they're coming from, how they're playing. If he plays man to man, then he just goes right to a hard left shoulder and a right hand hook. The TCU's just doing a job here after shooting in the 40s in the first half. They're shooting 50% here in the second. Wow, this is uh, what the Lopes needed to close out non-conference play. Looking to end a three-game slide against a team that was riding high, riding a three-game winning streak of their own, coming in against Eastern Illinois to know that this is how they're going to close it out. Positive momentum. They're going to have four days off, and then they're going to get back at it for conference play, but with this roster on the floor as well. Well, you kind of like the way that this team is starting to come together and showing some leadership between Laver and Johnson. Yeah. Now you're getting good contributions uh, from Javon Blackshear and Jenkins. Um, Mikey Dixon coming in here, showing some flashes in the second half. So, Coach Marley, you, you say, 
get rid of that non-conference schedule. We got some good momentum going into the conference. And guys like Oak Poe, Jenkins are going to see some minutes, are going to be contributing for this Lopes team going in. They know that they are going to get those quality minutes as well. Now, the bench is so important yep. uh, in, the, in the Western Athletic Conference because there's going to be nights where you get a guy that knows exactly what your strengths are when, when you're in that starting group, and they'll figure out a way to slow them down. So on those nights when Laver and Johnson can't get off the big starts, it's going to be those guys coming in off the bench and that fresh blood like Dixon and Jenkins, some of these Western Athletic opponents haven't seen them, and they can do some damage. 16 points tonight off that bench. That's, that's about as good as it gets here. Still got seven minutes and 45 seconds to play. Dixon for three. Money! Bam! Oh, there we go. What did we, what did we say there? We had 16 points off the bench. Give him three more. And Mikey Dixon you know, got a couple buckets and doing a really nice job. I think they got a late whistle there on the, on the shot was. attempt. Carlos Johnson? Miley can't. Well. Yeah. Lopes, did, Lopes got into big foul trouble in that first half and really just let the Panthers march to the free throw line. That zone defense has really helped eliminate some of those personal fouls and also has kept the Panthers off the free throw line. Matlock connects. You saw that upcoming schedule earlier as the Lopes begin conference play January 4th at CSU Bakersfield. Coach Barnes, in the ball game for the Panthers, number 35, one of the best in the conference. And then back here January 11th, hope to see you. Students will be back on campus. Hope to see the little lopes out as well. Great family entertainment here at GCU Arena. Yeah, did you see they had the little little lopes in, in training down there, yeah, taking over the havoc after. section. They were yeah. they were coaching them up on all the cheers and the hand awesome. gestures. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. The Havocs would be proud. I know they're on their breaks watching this game. Listen, we're saying, where, where was this Lopes team when we were there? When we were there back before Thanksgiving. Well, hopefully they'll, they'll be back here rocking and rolling on the 11th. Labor, big rebound, Dustin. Oh, he did such a nice job working himself to the front of the rim. He kept that ball high, and that's his money move right there. A little right hand hook right in front of the bucket. That's one of the easiest shots he'll see the rest of the year. Duffus. He stepped out of bounds. Yep, stepped out. Yeah, he, he, he put his left foot back like, you know, kickstart his way to the bucket, but he stepped on the bounds. He played with a guy in Philadelphia, used to do that once again, Jerry Stackhouse. I Carolina guy, but boy, he drive me crazy. Stepping out of bounds when he tried to drive the ball to the hole. Like, dude, what is your malfunction? I don't understand if you can't figure out the perimeter of the, uh, the diameter of the courts. The dimensions. Yeah. How are you going to step out of bounds every game and get a turnover by stepping out of bounds? You know what I've gathered from your from your comments about Philadelphia? <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to think that maybe it wasn't the best spot between <laughs> Allen Iverson and Jerry Stackhouse. Yeah, throw Derek <laughs> Coleman in that Derek mix. Coleman. My frustrations with Sean Bradley at times. Yeah, that was horrible. That was that was basketball <laughs> hell. The we city were, of brotherly you know, love. We went 18 games one year, oh. 15 games the next year. Ouch. Yeah, it's just painful. Wow, with that lineup? Uh, these guys didn't like each other. Yeah. Yeah. Allen Iverson, Jerry Stackhouse, even their posses would get into fights <laughs> during, during the game and in the halftime. Oh, 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 oh. Labor. <laughs> Alessandro Labor's having himself one well of a basketball game tonight. At 24 points, three for three from behind the arc. Inside, Dixon swarmed. Ooh, Jenkins took a little shot. Just one more time here. This is just a set play for Jenkins to find labor out of that posted area. I don't know how he got so wide open. The guy's been killing him all night long. You'd think you'd have somebody assigned him wherever he was at on the floor. That's one of those things we were talking about earlier. The Lopes want to know the personnel. I always say KYP, know your personnel, but Lopes on the head on the board, no personnel. Well, Coach Spoon won't be happy because his, his team didn't, didn't know the personnel that was on the floor for the Lopes coming out of that break, and they let Labor get an easy bucket. Yeah. 
foul there. As Blackshear tried to thread the needle. Go to the line. Yeah, I mean, this is Eastern Illinois team. They're seven and four coming into this game, right? That three-game win streak. Get blown out the last two opponents by an average of 21 and a half points a game. You're going to have a stinker every now and again. And offensively, they have just had one stinker of a basketball game. They haven't been able to get into any kind of a rhythm, but you got to give a lot of credit to the Lopes defense. They've been working yeah. hard in practice. Sure. They're communicating, they're talking, they're helping the helper. They're doing a nice job making it tough for the Panthers to score as well. I love that kid. <laughs> He's going to be a stud. He, he kind of... Number zero, the hero, Dwayne Russell. That's kind of way he, yes. he, he That's what he, he's playing pro basketball, by the way. He, he reminds me of, of Dwayne Russell. Like, you know, Dwayne Russell was that transfer right down from NAU. And then yep. once he got his, his opportunity, Coach Marley just gave the keys to the car and just said, okay, it, it's yours to run out, run the show when you're out there on the floor. And, and I think that's exactly what Coach Marley's going to start doing here. Or, for ja Javon Blackshear here once we get to conference play saying, okay, here's the keys to the car, the bus. You just take us where we need to go. Eight points, seven rebounds, three assists for the freshman from Shadow Mountain High School here in Phoenix. Yeah, that was after a slow start offensively. He was doing some good things, getting the ball to his teammates in good spots. But he didn't, you know, he didn't even score, but it didn't bother him. His team was up 18 at one point, took a nine-point advantage into the locker room. He's an unselfish player on top of everything else that he does on the floor. You know, in the uh, pregame show, Coach Marley said, Eastern Illinois, this is kind of a, a whack team. This is sure. this is a whack team, so, right, not, I mean, not. any indication here tonight, and uh, looking at that whack standings, at least in non-conference play, we all know how powerful New Mexico State is. Um, I feel a little bit more optimistic than I did before this game, you know what I mean? I absolutely know what you mean. I mean, you can take a look at some of the teams that Lopes were playing. They didn't play in some of the top teams in the country. Uh, San Diego State being undefeated, Liberty undefeated. Um, at St. Um, drawing a blank here all of a sudden. So, but they have played a tough schedule. So when you go against a team that maybe doesn't have the size of some of the ones you that, that, that has faced 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, you know, kind of like the, the, the height of what you're playing against in the Western Athletic Conference, you can get uh, good quality stops on defense. Well, he's going the side to give a bucket and a uh, foul right there. But Dixon got one. Dixon took Top it across of the, the bridge of the nose there, didn't he? That'll make your eyes water up. Well, good point about Blackshear, though. Short bench. Stepping up. Yeah, I was looking at this earlier. I was looking at some of the minutes being logged. You know, Blackshear's at 33 minutes and count right now. They had Johnson for five minutes. In fact, he's still stuck on, on five minutes. I don't know what's going on there, but you're going to have to. This is really good when you get a, a guy like Mikey Dixon, you get a little more fresh blood back into your, your, your roster because he can spell Johnson or, or Blackshear, take some of those minutes off of their legs. We'll be playing two games in a week going into the schedule. You're going to have to have times to get some guys some rest. And you can't always want to rest them in practice because then they get some rust for the game. So it's nice to be able to be able to practice them and be able to play them so they can always stay at the top of their performance. Mikey Dixon drives, comes back, moves it for Oak Pro. Tight team. Blackshear came out, took it away. Yeah, Coach Burley slowed it down a little bit here now with this big lead. He's, he's saying, well, we're going to work the little time off the clock on each possession. Back to Blackshear for three. Doesn't go. Okpo trying to put it home. Does! Bryce Okpo hoop and a harm. <laughs> he got pogo sticks for legs, this young man. He is a live wire. Look how quickly up off the floor. I thought he was going to go back up and just dunk that one. We'd seen him make that move before where he grabs the offensive board and goes back and powers at home. But he stays with it and gets back up again between two blue shirts, takes the foul and gets the uh, opportunity now to go to the line. He's got four points, looking for his fifth, but seven rebounds in the minutes that he's on the floor. That's, that's darn good. Fall back in again to that zone defense. Could 
So much trouble here for Eastern Illinois in the second half. Most points scored this year for the Lopes. Their uh, previous high was 75 against Mount St. Mary's on December 3rd. That was one heck of a ball game. That, that was an overtime game, too. So this this, they're doing this in regulation. Under four to go. Closing out the decade here. This home game. Christmas and New Year's. Hey, what a ride these last five years have been going D1. Oh, it's been a lot of fun. Jetson. Coach Marley over there. I, I, he bar barely could contain the smile he's probably got on his face. He, he doesn't want to show his joy too much right here in the team up by 21, but well, they're going to watch this film with a big smile on his face. Dave so Smith puts up the three, Labor. Oh, Labor got those big sock oh, 17 man. Nikes down on the inline. 316. We'll look back at moments of the past decade here at GCU. Stick around. Hi, guys, what's up? Have you guys ever heard of Ask GCU? I have. Yeah. I have heard of it. I have before, yeah. What is your favorite Ask GCU episode? Why well, should go to GCU? Probably the best food place. You know, we all love food. Yeah. Maybe. So probably that episode. <laughs> What's the best way to drink a champagne? Go karts. What is your favorite Ask GCU episode? All of them. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. My favorite episode is probably where they asked about the Chick Fil A line. The breakfast one's pretty good. The one where you guys talk about the best places to have breakfast on campus and everyone said Chick Fil A. That's the best breakfast I ever had. The Welcome Week episode. <laughs> the Welcome Week one. That one's really clutch. The Welcome Week where Brittany jumps around into people's cars and asks them questions. Remember kids, don't get into people's vehicles. I just really like you guys. I just like it when you're in it. You too. Com. Tweet hashtag AskGCU to get your question featured. Welcome back. Well, as the Lopes finish off tonight's action, this will be the final game of the decade. So we took some time to recall some of the great moments in GCU men's basketball history over the decade. Now you'll remember that in Division II, they did have a couple of titles and made it to the final game. And uh, then it was time for Dan Marley to take over in 2013. And when I talked to Coach about what stands out to him, he talked about those four straight 20 win seasons and how the team made that transition to Division I basketball playing at its highest and then also ranking high for him number two when the team reached the finals of the WAC tournament for the first two years. They were eligible. They weren't able to get New Mexico State and Vegas for that tournament play, but we all remember that fateful day back in 2016 when right here at GCU Arena, the Lopes, the Lopes handed the Aggies a uh, loss, uh, ending their 14-game winning streak. The final that night was 79-75. The fans rushed the court and Dan Marley told me he was living the dream and then of course Rick Pitino Louisville came out here and Dwayne Russell had a career night 42 points against him and Rick Pitino leading us to number five when he said this environment thanks to the Havocs was the hardest for his team to come in and play and so number five goes to the Havocs for putting this fan and cheering section on the map. Yeah the Havocs Really a total package here at GCU. Full support from the student body. They'll be back in full force to begin conference play, and they'll be pleased to, to hear the outcome of this game here tonight, closing out non-conference play. Yeah, that's been fantastic. I, I just think about some of the players as well that have gone on to play professional basketball, like Dwayne Russell and Josh Braun playing over in Germany, Vernon and Glaze in France. Remember old Daniel Alexander? He's been playing over in Sweden, even Trey Drexel from a couple years ago in Serbia. So it's just been fun to watch some of these guys grow up and develop their games and continue doing what they love to do, the passion of playing the game and getting a few buckets of ducats to, for their hard work. So many guys, too, in the uh, era of the transition. Jerome Garrison, Blake Davis, Killian Larson, Royce Woolridge. You mentioned Alexander and Braun and Russell. Brandy Glaze and Keontae and Jared Martin, Matt Jackson, and Ryan Marley. 
Oh, I forgot about old Ryan Marley. Yeah, he had him out because he's come back here a few times and watched the action. You know, this is this is what Lopes basketball is all about here, though. This is a, they're developing a family style where guys love to come back and support the former teammates and the new guys and critique the team and relive some of the memories that they had with Coach Marley. They all speak so highly of Coach Marley and the effect that he has not only on their making him a better basketball player, but but in their growth from teenagers to mid. And how about some of the uh, unsung heroes, the Ben Sanders, the Javon Estelles that come out of the Havocs and see some quality minutes and are just unbelievable teammates. And we're going to see some of those guys that typically find themselves near the end of the bench probably coming in here in the uh, last 141 to go with Rafe Gertis and Ethan Spry who saw some time there in the opening half. Yeah, I remember my favorite Martin, uh, Jared Martin. You meant that you might have mentioned Matt, Matt Jackson. Yeah. But those guys are just tremendous on, on building a culture. Mikey Dixon, two points in the opening half, 10 here in the second half. Uh, he had some rust on his game. <laughs> you, you can't sit 11 oh, months. My. Uh, yes. and, and be filling it up in practice and think all sort of what you've been doing in right. practice is going to come right out here when the lights are bright and the popcorn's popping and just start lighting up the scoreboard. So it, it, it took him, a, you know, he had 10 points up in New Mexico. He's 3 for 14 in that game, but slow start in the first half. But like you say, you got to harness that adrenaline and go out there, relax, use it to your advantage and not your disadvantage. Had some box fans back there. I wonder if they thought this was the Gila River Arena or something. Coming up at Bakersfield, January 4th. Tune in to Michael Potter and Paul Coral, 1580 AM, 99.3 FM, 95.9 FM. As he uh, looks. Hey, Dr. Paul's got his band revved up tonight. <laughs> Try to split. What's what Dr. Paul's last name? Paul Cook. Oh, Cook, yeah. They, they got their pinstripe, or, uh, yeah, pinstripe overalls on the night there they are playing loud for the holidays they never take a day off driving Opo got up got a little arm on it apparently nice effort yeah, i think he got a little bit of dixon's i think that was dixon's rest as he was driving oh matt Lock, oh, matt Lock. Yep. as he was driving to the hall just couldn't quite get enough ball took some rest and, and obviously this game is over but you got to like the efforts from some of the guys that don't have much opportunity, haven't had a lot of plays run for them, like Jenkins. They don't really run any plays for Jenkins and uh, Oak Poe. Even, even Dixon. I mean, he, whatever he gets, he kind of gets kind of uh, after someone else has created something for him. Long distance shot by Eastern Illinois off the front of the rim, big rebound. Back into the hands of Marvin Johnson. He takes it. Oh, we can't put it home. I'll use the glass, young man. It's the first time GCU has had three 16-plus point scorers since the WAC tournament opener against Seattle University last year. Under a minute to go. Stay tuned. It'll chat with perhaps a few Lopes players. Yeah, you know, the best thing about this is nobody got hurt. You know, Amen. you 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 want everybody to go out there, play hard, play well, but you want everybody to be healthy going into conference play here in 2020. So you got great, great contributions. They're gonna love these next four or five days. Off. Hey, look, oh, I even see like Coach that, Marley huh? and Coach Chu. They're oh, smiling down there man. on that bench. Hadn't seen oh, that in the that. last three That's games. Awesome. So everyone's gonna feel good about the break, even though the team's not got the record they want. A win cures a lot of ills. Amazing. And everybody stayed healthy coming out of this thing. So enjoy these next four or five days. Nobody go on back on their break and do something stupid like get on a skateboard. <laughs> and, and then come back here in 2020 with the right mindset to go on and, and get this Western Athletic Conference title this year and get to the big dance. Amen, amen. Mikey Dixon, second game. As a member of the Lopes, looking sharp. Player of the game is going to be tough. 
15 points. Mikey Dixon in game two. A long distance. There it is. Got a hand on there. Went out of bounds. It'll belong to Eastern Illinois. 32.8 on the clock. Max Smith. Rebound, Illinois. Back over. In and out. Ethan Spry up for Mikey Dixon. They'll bring it into the front court. Double it off. 85 points for the low. We haven't wow. seen them light the scoreboard up like this all season long. Good job defensively in the second half as well. That zone defense really frustrated the Panthers. Bit of an early Christmas present. Put an end to a three-game slide. And GCU victorious over Eastern Illinois, 85 to 63. Big, big win to close out non-conference play. Some of the uh, tough, tough opponents in non-conference play. Undefeated San Diego State, undefeated Liberty, 10-2 New Mexico State, 9-1 Northern Iowa. Eastern Illinois came in here, riding a three-game winning streak at 7-4 in non-conference play. The Lopes, victorious, big time here tonight. As this has got to be a big momentum boost for a GCU. Let's send it down to Kate Longworth. All right, thank you guys. I'm joined now by Lorenzo. Great performance out there for you guys tonight. What was really your team's success? Uh, we really just wanted to lock in and play defense. Uh, we knew that we were going into break, going into conference. We want to go in with some momentum, get a win under our belt. And uh, we know things haven't been going our way, but we just knew we had to lock down on defense. And it starts on that end first, and then I'm just glad we were able to get the win. Yeah, it seemed like there was a lot of urgency from the get-go, a lot of energy. How do you bottle that up and carry it into the new year with Black Light? Oh, man, really uh, just continue to stay focused. Uh, we know going home, we have to continue to work on our games and uh, practices we really keyed in on that. And energy and communication, that was the biggest thing with us. And so I'm glad we are able to do that. And speaking of that new energy, one thing that will help is, of course, having Mikey Dixon out on the court in the Lopes uniform. What's going through your mind now? You have lost two games, but one here on the home court. Um, you know, I'm just excited to be back. I'm just trying to play with a lot of energy, you know, do whatever I can do to help my team win. But I'm definitely excited. Um, you know, I got two games under my belt, now I feel more comfortable and I'm in the groove. I feel like I'm getting a better groove every every game. What's it been like working with Coach Marley in this squad? Um, it's been real great, you know. Um, Coach Marley, got a real, he's, a, he's a real good coach. He got a lot of good information. So the time I was sitting out, I was just trying to, like, soak everything in. And, you know, um, I feel like he's been patient with me, you know, coming back, um, letting me get my groove and stuff. So it's, it's, it's been fun. And you'll have a two-week break, but what are you anticipating with conference play? Um, you know, conference play should be fun. Um, we're going to have to play hard. We know everybody in our conference is, um, is, is like it's small, undersized and small, but they play hard. So, you know, we're going to have to play hard, rebound, and, you know, it should be fun. But we got to relock in. We, we had a kind of a rough uh, start, to the, start to the first, but, you know, we're going to get it going, conference play. Well, we wish you both a happy holiday season. Go celebrate with the team. We'll see you back out here in 2020 looking for big things. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, and now we send you guys to break. Go join the team for celebration. We thank Mikey Dixon and Lorenzo Jenkins for joining us. We'll be back with more recap of Look Basketball right after this. I'm Jeff. I'm earning my Bachelor of Arts in Christian Studies online from GCU. My biggest challenge coming back into school after taking a 15 year break was insecurity. Insecurity that I didn't know how to write a paper. I didn't know how to study anymore. The way that the program is structured, I can kind of grow into the classes and that really gave me the confidence to be successful. I'm a working professional. I've got a job that demands 40 to 60 hours a week from me. Because of the online structure, I can still get things done. I can still have a life. It allows me to knock out courses when I can. I think my time at GCU is gonna help me be a better father, be a better person, be a better disciple. I spent years thinking that I could never do this. So now, the fact that I'm about to graduate, I feel like I achieved something that I never thought I was gonna be able to. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Merry Christmas from the GCU dance team.
We hope your holidays are merry and bright. Welcome back. The Lopes victorious here to close out 2019 on their home court, 85 to 63 over Eastern Illinois. Barry Butel, Scott Williams back with you after Kay Longworth chatted with Mikey Dixon and also Lorenzo Jenkins. And it's so nice, happy. <laughs> man, it's so nice, right? It just seems like a, a huge weight has been lifted off of everyone's shoulders. Yeah, you can see the coaching staff in the final minutes yeah. there, kind of like just a, a big exhale from them, not realizing that hard work that they've been putting in practice really paid dividends tonight. This one is going to be, a, this is a tight voting. You talk about uh, player of the game brought to you by Canyon State Credit Union. Canyon State committed to you. We're going to go with Alessandro Laver, and you can't argue that. Absolutely not, because this guy got the party started down low and inside. He was absolutely fantastic from the field, 10 to 13. He does 24 points. He got on the glass of seven rebounds, four assists. He's a plus 29 when he was on the floor. That's wow. the biggest number we have seen of, uh, by far all season long. He did it with a variety of moves with and exercising good footwork, patience, head and shoulders fake. Went to his primary move a lot, and then after they start playing that heavy, came back, snapped it off with his secondary baseline jump shot. But he stepped outside uh, for buckets. I love that one right there because you can't teach that. That's just something special. As uh, the three players, Johnson, Laver, and Jenkins, 56 points, 19 rebounds. Great to see. A number of guys stepping up. Jenkins was another guy that definitely stepped up here great, tonight. Great uh, uh, boost off the bench uh, for Jenkins. 20 points off the bench. A lot of those coming from the low Jenkins. He came out and he started 4-4 four, four from the field. Did a lot of his damage in and around the basket. Knocked down a couple outside shots. But he was just ultra aggressive. When he wasn't scoring inside, they had a bunch of guys shooting the three from the outside. 11 of 19 from the land of three after going two for 11. Uh, at New Mexico, but the keys were simple tonight. They kept their offensive rhythm going tonight. 85 points, they lit up the scoreboard. Defense was absolutely fantastic. The way they communicated and talked in the second half, that zone defense was huge. And then all they wanted for Christmas was that win, and they got it. Snapping that three-game yeah. losing streak and giving them some really good positive momentum headed into the break and into 2020. Uh, Happy New Year. And that can't be understated, right? I mean, the, the momentum, the, I mean, the locker room is a lot different right now. You just know it. There's people that are in there, they're laughing, they're smiling, they're high-fiving. Right. I mean, there's just a different vibe in there right now. This is a big burden that was lifted. It really was because this team is not what they thought that they were going to have. And you with Oscar Frere being out, not getting the transfer from TCU that they right. expected, not getting the good start that they wanted, having to go against some teams that they probably, when they first scheduled, didn't realize were going to be uh, with two Unbeaten. losses between three teams. Right. So they got hit up the head with a bag of nickels before they could even get their tennis shoes laces up tight. So now they found their footing. They realize what they got going into conference play. They know the, the opponents that they're going to face and style of plays that they're going against. Yeah. And they got a good feeling about their own offensive execution. Now, it's only been two games, but what, what do you see from Mikey Dixon? He really lit it up here in the second half. Yeah. What's he going to bring? A, a player that can add a punch. You yeah. know, he can, he can take some minutes away from Blackshear and uh, Brown off the ball, let them play off the ball, not having to bring it up all the time and, and w really wearing themselves down. He's a slasher to the basket. You can see he can create his own offense, and he can shoot it from distance. All right, we'll uh, travel down to the post-game press conference and head coach Dan Marley. <sighs> yeah, it was, um, it was by far our best game, and that's not saying a whole lot, but yeah, it was our best game. Uh, we came out, obviously shot the ball well. Um, Got into foul trouble the first half, uh, short bench, but I thought we really battled in the second half. Came out in the first four minutes, played well, and uh, just stick, stick to our game plan. I thought Alessandro was great in the post, going through him. Uh, obviously, Carlos at the beginning, and then just everybody. The way we rebounded the ball, we talked about uh, winning the rebounding battle. It's a team that's a good at rebounding team, and if we can beat them, we'll probably win the game, and we did that. Um, so really happy with how our guys played. They shared the ball, shot the ball extremely well, but. Uh, just a good way to go to the break. And then uh, we'll, they'll be off until the 27th. We'll come back, and then we'll get ready for uh, whack season. Well, you know, I don't know. I, 
I, I would hope so. Uh, I think Ollie does a good job of scoring, especially against uh, guys that are as big as he is. He can shoot over them. So Ollie was really patient down there, did a good job of passing, and we did a good job of moving. But, you know, it's not a secret. If you're, if you're going to shoot the ball well from three, you're going to have a good chance to win games. And that's going to be a big weapon all year long for us. We just got to, you know, monitor how many we shoot uh, tonight. You know, we shot 19 and made 11 of them. So if we shoot the ball well, that's going to open up the drives and, and again, open it up for Ollie. So, um, Hopefully we found a, a success. I told the guys that uh, don't eat too much because when we get back, we'll get back to our track, track running ways when we get back uh, uh, after break because that seemed to help. Huh? Oh, it's always corrective, but they're going to be corrected a lot. Uh, and it's not even – it's just that we have to get back to practicing hard. And it's not that I'm punishing them. Even if, even if they're not doing anything wrong, we have to get back to practicing hard. What, I, what we were doing is – trying to save them for a game and not run them, and you're afraid if somebody's going to get hurt or hurt in hard drills and stuff, then you're, you're down another player. So we just can't play like that because it showed that we don't um, play hard enough in games. So I think our guys have been really receptive to it. And uh, the way they played tonight, I'm sure they're open to, to practicing hard. And it's not going to be punishment. It's just that we're going to go hard, and we're going to do our drills really hard, and we're going to play at a pace that uh, you know practice should be hard. And the harder you practice, the easier games are. Oh man, I had to, you know, I had to beg him to shoot. You know, he he's just trying to feel his way, and he's such a good scorer. Um, he can get to the basket, uh, but I just told him you just got to let one go. You just got to shoot one, and then get your little nerves out, and then you can really penetrate. But yeah, he's he's an unbelievable scorer, but he's even a better shooter. The guy can really shoot the ball, and in practice, he's unstoppable. Um, so in the first half, he turned down a, a couple threes when he was open, and again, I think he's just trying to feel his way through, and that's understandable not playing for a whole year, but. Uh, when he starts shooting the ball and starts being confident shooting that uh, open jump shot, then he's going to be hard to guard because he's really creative with the ball and get to the basket. Yeah, I mean, we had to go to the zone because we wanted to, uh, you know, we had, we had so much fouls, so many foul troubles, and they had a hard time scoring. Um, they're not a great three-point shooting team. They're okay, but we did a good job of flying around and making them score from the from the high post area, and uh, we just did a good job. I'm more... I'm more uh, I was really happy with our rebound for the most part. You know, we did a good job of really concentrating. I mean, Bryce had eight rebounds. Javon, who unfortunately is probably our best uh, rebounder, had eight also. So um, everybody rebounds. I mean, all around the board have 46 rebounds uh, and beat them by, you know, nine when they got a few at the end. I was very happy about that. Yeah, he can really score. You know, Doobie's just got to be uh, get more concentration on defense and be a little stronger. But he can he can score the basketball. He's just got to lock in on the other stuff and really concentrate. When he learns how to concentrate and play defense and rebound the basketball, uh, he's going to really help us because the guy can't score and he can shoot it. And he, he's pretty good in the post. He's a big kid. He's strong. So we'll have to start util utilizing him a little bit more in the post in that way, especially when Ollie's out. Uh, but he's just got to concentrate and focus more on uh, the other parts of this game. Uh, as of right now, Oscar is gone. He's not gonna. He's not gonna be eligible. I, I think there's a percent chance he might be back, but I'm not holding out for it. Which is sad. I mean, you know, I love Oscar. He's been here since he's a freshman. He's he'd be a great player this year as a senior. He's really worked hard. He's unbelievably athletic. He put a lot to this team, but he didn't take care of his business in the classroom. And I don't see him. I think there's just a minute chance, but I'm not. And it's time to move on. You know, it's been. All season, I'm not sure, you know, who's going to be on my team. And now I took a picture before the game because I got nine guys in there. It looks like I told them you guys look like Hoosiers. I mean, we got nine guys just sitting there. It's like there's hardly anybody in there, so we took a picture. And maybe that's going to be a rallying cry, you know. You know, nine strong or whatever you want to say. Bung guy gets back, ten strong. Because that's all we got. So now we know who we have on this team and just got to focus and, and find a way to get it done. Post-game press conference from head coach Dan Marley as you look at the upcoming schedule for GCU men's basketball. It begins January 4th, CSU Bakersfield. Coach Barnes and the Roadrunners, 8 p.m. tip. And then it's back here January 11th, Fox 10 extra the home, 5.30 pregame with Kate. Then it's off to Chicago State January 16th, 18th at KC. And then back in GCU Arena January 23rd against Seattle University. That'll do it from here at GCU Arena, where tonight the Lopes beat Eastern Illinois 85-63. Please join Michael Potter, Paul Coro on 1580 AM, 99.3 FM, 95.9 FM. GCU opens conference play against Bakersfield January 4th.
Our next telecast, January 11th against California Baptist. But until then, for Kate Longworth, Scott Williams, and our entire crew, I'm Barry Beachell, wishing you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good night, everyone.